your energy isn't just vibes, it's actually your mitochondria. The problem is that 94% of US adults have some element of mitochondrial dysfunction. This means that they can't make energy effectively. We have the most mitochondria per cell in our eggs and sperm, reproductive organs, but also our brain, of course, our heart, our liver, and our musculoskeletal tissue. The real bottleneck to energy production is always gonna be your mitochondria. The mitochondria are these amazing organs or organelles in our cells that help us make energy. They are probably from a very, very long standing relationship with bacteria when our cells kind of co-opted this bacteria that we now call the mitochondria to help us make more energy effectively. The thing about the mitochondria is that they make a lot of energy. In fact, we make about 165 pounds of ATP every single day if we're doing this effectively. Now, most of that's recycled very quickly, but you do have a lot of ATP that's being made. Not only are you making ATP, you're also making what's called waste products of energy metabolism. This includes carbon dioxide, water, and these other things called free radicals or reactive oxygen species, ROS. And as a result of these ROS, this is a signaling molecule that tells the mitochondria they need to make more or less energy. But what can happen is if you have too much ROS, the system starts breaking down. You need antioxidants to actually neutralize the reactive oxygen species. And if you don't have enough of those around or you deplete them over time, you're also gonna feel very poorly because even if you're making energy, you're not detoxing from the energy you make. A quick primer on mitochondria. They have two membranes, an inner and outer membrane. And what happens inside the mitochondria is you have these complexes. They're called protein complexes, complex one, two, three, and four. And all these complexes are created so that we can make a gradient in them between those two membranes. And as that gradient gets released, you make ATP or adenosine triphosphate. And where is this energy coming from? Well, it's coming from electrons from the food that we eat. It's coming from fat, it's coming from carbohydrates, and sometimes proteins as well. All of these components of our food go down into the mitochondria in something called the citric acid cycle. And then what happens there is that we release electrons from our food and they go into the mitochondria and go through this electron transport chain, which is through the protein complexes, so that we can make energy that way. As electrons flow, we make a gradient of hydrogen ions. And then as that gradient gets released, you make ATP. The problem is, as I mentioned, 94% of US adults have some element of mitochondrial dysfunction along the way. Oftentimes it's either in the input of the electrons in the flow through those complexes, or it's on the other side, which is the detoxification side. And oftentimes it's actually in both locations. Even as we age, our mitochondria get less efficient. We get less complex function. We get more deterioration of electron flow. We get more leakage of electrons as we get older as well. And if electrons leak, we get more reactive oxygen species. What happens when we have less ATP around is that we start feeling poor in many different ways. As I mentioned, we have many mitochondria in some parts of our body, and that's where most of your symptoms will likely be. Infertility rates going up dramatically. Brain fog, concentration, fatigue, all of these things are going up dramatically. It's one of the things that I always hear from my patients is the number one complaint, which is I want more energy. I don't feel like I have enough energy throughout the day. As we make less energy, our cells start breaking down. They cannot make energy as effectively as they are breaking down. So it becomes a spiral. This is the aging spiral that we're seeing. It is not normal to have dysfunctional mitochondria when you're 30 or 40 years old, but now we're seeing it all the time because of toxins and stress and insulin resistance and everything else. And so if you don't have working mitochondria, what can happen is that you have symptoms related to those areas where you have the most mitochondria. Most prominently for people, it's going to be in their brain. Brain fog, concentration problems, attention issues, fatigue after just a little bit of activity during the day. Exercise induced fatigue as well. So you go exercise and you can't move or you're super sore for three or four days later. So it's a huge problem. There's a lot of different reasons why we have mitochondrial dysfunction. The first and most common reason in the United States is actually insulin resistance. So our high blood sugars bring too much energy, too much glucose to our mitochondria itself. And as a result of that, the mitochondria are trying to make more energy, but they start breaking down in the process. And that insulin resistance, those high blood sugars, just continue and cycle and spiral that process. Another reason for mitochondrial dysfunction is what I would call sympathetic overdrive or stress. And this could be from many different things, including a stressful relationship, a stressful background, maybe trauma in the background. It could be from stress at work or stress at home. And you just have this constant fight or flight going on all the time. And that stresses the mitochondria because you take 
all these hormones and all these neurotransmitters that are released when you have sympathetic overdrive and those stress the mitochondria as well. In addition, you have infections, toxins on our environment, and even medications all affect mitochondrial function. So many of us are living with fatigue, burnout, just unable to do the things we want to do. And the mitochondria are the key part of the issue that we need to address holistically. And the problem is that we're mostly thinking about it as band-aids, something that gives you a little bit more energy now, like for example, caffeine. Caffeine does give you more wakefulness and more energy in the short term, but to build tolerance to it over the long term, you need more and more and more and you get more crashes in between. And honestly, caffeine is like borrowed energy. You're borrowing energy for that moment to get more wakefulness, get more alertness. But in the long run, if you're drinking too much coffee, especially, it's going to backfire on you. The question then becomes, how do we optimize mitochondrial function? And there's many ways to do this. The first thing that I always want to tell people is that stress is probably your biggest enemy when it comes to mitochondrial function. If you're always moving, always going, always hustling, your body can never go into that rest detoxification mode, which is your parasympathetic activation. You have your parasympathetic mode, which is your rest, digest, your sympathetic, which is your fight or flight. Unfortunately, hustle culture is just the name of the game. I grew up in New York, in New York City, the city never sleeps. And I went to medical school and we had shirts made for my friends and I that said sleep is for quitters. This is all part of that American culture where we don't want to sleep. We'll sleep when we're dead. Hustle, hustle, hustle. And then we have families and we have kids and we're working long hours and the average amount of sleep that somebody's getting now is around six or six and a half hours, which is not enough. So all of these things are building up stress and anxiety and GABA deficiency as well. This is what's the main driver of mitochondrial dysfunction now, alongside insulin resistance. And so you want to think about these inputs, right? What's causing the mitochondrial dysfunction? So stress, insulin resistance, toxins, medications, things like metformin or uh, proton pump inhibitors and other medications as well, birth control pills too, actually. These are all can affect mitochondrial function. So if you don't address that aspect of things, no matter what you try to do with the mitochondria itself, you're going to be metaphorically pissing in the wind, which I don't recommend. Because if you just focus on mitochondrial function, there's only so much you're gonna be able to do if you don't focus on those inputs as well. So how do we focus on not only those inputs, but also the mitochondrial piece? And this is where it gets really interesting because you can do a lot of testing now to understand how well your cells are working. In my practice, it's something called health optimization medicine. We use something called metabolomics. Metabolomics is the study of these small molecules, real-time assessment of what's happening in your cells right now. We can assess what's happening inside your mitochondria by looking at the citric acid cycle and some of those intermediates along the way. In addition, we can also understand vitamins, minerals, nutrients, and cofactors, antioxidants, heavy metals, and other things that are also affecting mitochondrial function. And when you look at the data, when you look at the actual testing, you can actually see where you can input various interventions and see significant benefit. And from a supplementation perspective, you can dial in your supplements depending on what you need, depending on testing that's showing you where you might want to focus your attention on supplementation. So one of the main things that I use as a support for almost everybody that has some element of mitochondrial dysfunction is going to be methylene blue. Is methylene blue is a fantastic compound at very low doses, 4, 8, 16, 25 milligrams, where you can increase energy production and compensate for mitochondrial dysfunction on any of those complexes that I mentioned before. But at the same time, not only does it help you make more energy, but it also helps you detox because it can work just like an antioxidant as well. So it's this really cool, what's called a redox cycler. That's why I use it a lot because it has this capacity of energy and detox. So you're not stressing the system because you're not just giving more energy. And you're not just getting detox by giving something like a vitamin C or alpha-lipoic acid. And those can be very important too. But the thing about optimizing mitochondrial function is that it takes a while. It doesn't happen overnight. You have to work on those inputs. Uh, you have to de decrease your stress, insulin resistance, toxins, etc. Those can take time. And then in addition, even supplementation, things like antioxidant repletion or micronutrient depletion like your B vitamins, this takes a while compared to starting something like methylene blue, which could be great as a way to help support mitochondrial function right now. And then maybe you need to take it for a period of time as you're dialing in your health over the long term. This is exactly why we built Just Blue at Transcriptions. Just Blue is 16 milligrams of methylene blue, pure methylene blue, to help on this mitochondrial, this cellular level. So you can help make more energy and also help the detoxification process as well. So you have this combination that's so supportive for the system. The key with methylene blue though, and I promise this is really the key, you have to start off at really low doses. 
four, eight, maybe 12 and a half milligrams at most. Then increase your dose over time and feel how you're feeling. See what kinds of shifts that you're making. And then, then you'll know where the dose is going to be. When you're starting methylene blue, if you're coming from a place where you've been pretty sick for a while, you may need to keep on it for a while before you start being able to peel it off and wean it down as you're optimizing your health in other ways. If you're using it more as a performance enhancer, you can use it as needed when you need more mitochondrial support. Maybe when you're doing more endurance exercise, you need more aerobic capacity, or you can use it on an airplane because on an airplane, you're low oxygen, you're pressurized to about 8,000 feet above sea level. That's a low oxygen environment. So methylene blue can compensate for that, help you make more energy, and also help with the detoxification process and protect you from radiation that's at higher levels when you're on an airplane. So you can use it as needed if you have more performance related needs, but more often if you need it for more symptomatic, complex medical, chronic issues that you've been dealing with for a long time. In the end, longevity is not just about living longer. It's about living healthier with as much power and vitality as possible. And that's what Methylene Blue can do in the short term that truly helps support your foundation as you're working harder on your path to health optimization.